Okay, in this video, I'm going to be installing a sump pump cover in my basement now that my floor is largely down. Now, I'm not happy about having a sump pump in the corner of my basement where it is. I wish it was in the utility room, but it's not, and I don't want to smash out the floor again and put another one in somewhere else, so I'm going to work with what I've got. My goal is for this to look very similar to the stairs in height and in shape. I also need to ensure that the sump pump cover I put in does not preclude me from accessing the sump pump underneath this black plastic cover. So you can see that I've left a small gap for a 2x4 to fit around the edge of the sump pump cover so that you can still get into the sump pump. And you can see I got the four treated 2x4s in place where I'm going to put them. To secure the treated wood to the floor, I'm just going to use a ram set and just nail it straight down. Now when you're using the ram set, you obviously want to use eye protection and hearing protection. Now for each of the treated 2x4 uh, pieces, I threw on at least uh, two nails from the ram set uh, and also make sure that there's uh, no movement. Sometimes the ram set doesn't uh, put them in all the way, so I use the sledgehammer hit them one or two times and make sure they're flushed out so that when I put the framing down I don't have a nail sticking up causing the uh, framing above it to be sort of wonky. Now as you can see everything's pretty square to the wall. Now going over to the stairs uh, like I said I want it to closely match them so I'm going to shoot for eight inches high even though the stairs are slightly less. And to make the frame for the box I'm going to use some econo studs left over from my basement construction. So with a top plate and a bottom plate, I'm looking at 8 inches in total. And I'm going to construct these frames with just some simple construction screws. So there's the first one. You can see that there are four 5 inch wood blocks and a top and bottom plate. To secure the framing to the treated wood, I'm going to use ACQ rated screws and you can see that I also screwed each of the uh, framing chunks to the adjacent one and that really provides uh, a lot of rigidity once you add the, uh, the screws in there. As you can see I've left a gap so that I can still remove the sump pump cover and the reason I did that is so that I didn't have to have a another 2x4 width uh, into the room taking up more space. So I figured this will be as close as I can get it to the wall while still being able to access the sump pump cover. And I also threw a additional 2x4 in uh, sort of right across the box in the center and that is just to ensure that I don't have too much sag in the uh, cover once I put it on. Now that I got the framing in place I'm going to do a rip cut on a piece of plywood and I'm going to use a small uh, jig that I, I sort of made for that and you can see once I do the rip cut it's in place and I just screw it in. And there's the second piece. I, again I did a rip cut at approximately 8 inches. Um, there is obviously a slight ridge in places everything's not perfect so I'm going to use this small circular saw and once I've cleaned it up with the circular saw I'm gonna come in with the palm sander and just make sure that all of the edges and where the 2x4s and plywood connect uh, that there's no ridges so that you can slide the cover on smoothly without it getting hung up on another piece of wood and there it is all sanded down you can see that the plywood and all the 2x4s are nice and flush to each other. It's fairly flat and fairly level. Next I'm going to frame up the box using pieces of engineered hardwood. And you can see that I've cut the ends at a 45 degree angle so that you don't have an exposed end. To secure the hardwood to the box I have some tongue and groove glue, some construction adhesive, I got a drill and a drill bit to pre-drill the wood with some nails, obviously a hammer, and also a small nail set. So I'm using the tongue and groove glue to obviously glue the tongue and groove together and I'm just going to use the construction adhesive to hold 
the hardwood to the plywood box. Now I'm going to use the drill to pre-drill some holes to pound some nails in. Um, and I'm only doing the nails where there's a 2x4 behind the plywood so it has something good to grip into. And I also I don't want nails sticking out inside of the box itself. And I'm going to do a few of them. Obviously I'll just videotape one so you don't have to watch it uh, several times. On the other side of the box I'm going to do the exact same thing and hopefully the 45 degree cuts I made line up fairly well. At this point it's very important to ensure that the ends are very tightly held together so that you don't have a gap. Uh, to help me do this I'm going to put a couple screws in behind to really pull the two pieces of wood tight together. Now I got a one inch screw so it goes through the three quarter inch plywood and just barely into the hardwood. And now I'm going to do some nailing as well through the tongue of the wood. And as you can see I put three nails in through the tongue as well in addition to the glue and a couple of screws. Now I need to cut one more piece of hardwood but obviously this time it's a little bit shorter uh, so I am going to have to do a rip cut. And as always wear proper eye and ear protection and if you have a, a wonky table saw like I do make sure you have some sort of a, a board or something to keep your hands away from the blade. Once again applying some tongue and groove glue and some construction adhesive so everything holds together tight and then I'll put in the second row of hardwood. I found the tongue and groove glue is fairly easy to clean up but if you get a drop of that construction adhesive on the floor it can be a real pain. And once again I have a few more of these one inch screws so I'm just going to pop them through the back side so it holds everything together nice and tightly. So although there's no tongue to drill through, I am going to do some pre-nailing. It just has to go in at a bit of a higher angle. So there's the box all set up with the two rows of hardwood. And you can see I did take the sander again to the top just to make sure that everything is good and flat. Now it's time to do, uh, do some rip cuts on the plywood for the top of the box. Now using the circular saw jig I have is very helpful because it can cut an angle nice and straight across the plywood and this is important because the corner of the drywall sticks into the room a little further. So I am cutting on a slight angle to accommodate the corner deviation in the drywall. And there you can see the box is in and again uh, the corner is slightly off square but uh, that's okay you can't really tell. Now my next issue is these cords. Obviously I want them to come out and to be able to close the box. So the first thing I do is drill a couple holes in the 2x4s that I put down. And then I'm going to use a coping saw to tidy up these holes a little bit so that I could pass the electrical cords through. So there you go. Electrical cords through. I've also used the 1 inch drill bit to drill a hole through the cover of the box. Now I'm going to use the coping saw to cut out the remaining wood so that the electrical cords could pass through it. I'll do a quick check with the trim I'm going to use to make sure that I've uh, cut the hole deep enough and it looks good to go. Now it's time to apply the hardwood to the top of the box. You can see that I've cut it at a 45 degree angle. Um, obviously this is the side piece so I've got to cut two 45 degree angles on this and I'm going to use these approximately two inch cuts with another 45 degree angle so that you don't see the plywood behind it or the edge of the hardwood. Now just like the front of the box I'll be using construction adhesive to hold the hardwood in place. Uh, I'm not going to put any nails through this because they will also go through the plywood box and that is not what I want sticking down from the, uh, the lid of this box. Now it's going to be very important to get this first piece in place correctly because all subsequent pieces will rely on the uh, accuracy of its placement. So I'm going to use the trim piece that I have to make sure that it's all lined up so that once I've finished the box there won't be any edges to be seen. I also have to 
ensure that the front edge of the box is in the right position as well. Now since this is the first piece and it's obviously the most important one to have down correctly, I'm going to clamp it and essentially leave it for 24 hours. Now that it's dry, I'm going to do the second piece, which I had to cut so that it finishes the line of hardwood on the, uh, the box. And this one's going to go down in the exact same manner, with the one difference of adding the tongue and groove glue. And just like the first piece, I am going to use the clamps to clamp this one in place. So you can see there that it's lined up fairly well and I won't have a big reveal. The rest of the pieces go down in a very similar manner uh, using the construction adhesive and tongue and groove glue. Uh, the only difference is I only need to make sure that the front edge is in the correct position. Now when I get to this electrical cord, again I have to cut this piece out. This time I'm going to be a little bit more careful because obviously this is the piece that you're going to see. And I'm going to make sure that I make a large enough hole that all the electrical cords can pass through once I have the trim down. To do this I'm just going to use a router and clamp the board to my workbench. And now I'm going to make a few passes with the router to slowly cut out the channel that the electrical cords are going to go through. And there it is, nice and clean. Now before gluing this piece down, I'm going to ensure that I do a, a test fit to make sure that it's good and that it actually fits properly as well, uh, that it looks good with the trim behind it. And I am satisfied that that'll work and still give me enough room to have the cords coming out. Now since all the edges are, are very white, I'm going to use some of this uh, Minwax Special Walnut Wood Stain just to stain up the edges and that way if there is a bit of a reveal uh, due to sort of a, a gap in the wood it's not going to be nearly as obvious because it won't be this big bright white chunk of wood it'll be uh, sort of stained all the same color to ensure that if there's any mistakes they don't really stand out so you can see once again I've got uh, two 45 degree angles one across the whole length and then one where these two trim pieces fit together. To put the edges in, I'm going to use primarily construction adhesive. I'm also using a nail gun to tack it in place because it's very important that this piece sits in very tight so that you don't have a gap between the two pieces of wood. So you can see I got a few nail holes there, quite a few actually, um, but I was required to make sure that that fit in there really tightly. And I'm going to do the same to the other side. Now because I use the nail gun, I'm obviously going to want to fill those holes. So what I'm using is a dark walnut stained wood filler. And now that the wood filler is in and dry, I'm going to use the Minwax Special Walnut Stain again, as I found that that was a pretty close color. And as you can see, once you hit it with the stain, the wood filler disappears pretty well. And once I wipe that down a little bit later, it's going to really have blended in. Now you can see the two side by side, so quite a big difference. Now there's what the box looks like without the trim. As you can see, it blends in with the floor pretty well, and it's approximately the height of the step. Now here's the box with the trim sort of test fitted where it is. For the most part, it's a pretty normal cut. I have given myself a little extra space, and you can see that I've also had to make a little cutout to accommodate the lid of the box and it fits across like that. And again, I've kept it a little bit loose so that you can still take the lid of the box off. If you made your trim really tight, you would not be able to pull the box out. And there it is, all secure. So the sump pump's hidden. I can still take the lid of the box off and the trim fits quite well. Now, as I said, my preference would be to not have the sump pump in this location. But I think overall I'm pretty happy with how this uh, short uh, sump pump cover box turned out. You can see I could push the lid in towards the wall and then slide it out at an angle and it pulls out uh, without any issues. Had I made the trim tighter, 
that uh, lid would not have been able to slide out like that. Sliding into place a little tricky because you have to catch the electrical cords in there as well, but it's nothing that one person can't do. Now obviously if you're putting carpet down on top of your sump pump, this is not required and you can just slap the carpet right on top. Because I'm doing the hardwood in the basement, this sump pump needed something to cover it and this is what I came up with. So uh, if you have this same problem, I hope this helps you out. Anyway, thanks for checking out my video and don't forget to like and subscribe.